Hi guys. Sorry for some delay. So I'd like to <clears throat> make a roll call this morning. We have Melba Grace, the first one, Marsden, J. Dulog, Erabiliano. Um, we also have uh, Jezreel, GJ, Eugene, um, Joven Steve, Jan Oliver, Hasney, we have Michael Jan, we have Liza May, we have David Paul, uh, Grace Dave also. We have um, Russia, Russia. Um, We have Lycagen, uh, James Rubitzo, Danica. Um, we also have um, Ragnar Luth Brook, a joiner from maybe other class. We have um, Aria Nicole, we have, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So I will not review any more of the previous lecture, but we start immediately with this lecture. So this is, um, again, uh, our main reference for this lecture is Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths. So um, we finished with um, second order Dell operators, and now we're going to do the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you if you have a function, and you can you're, you're able to get the derivative of that function, if you're if you place the derivative inside the integral. Uh, If you place the derivative of that inside the integral and integrate from, say, a specific point A to B, then it would just be the same as evaluating the function at a final point B um, and also in a, in, a, in a initial point A. And you take the difference, that's just the integral of the derivative of the function. So here it is. Mathematically, this is the expression for that. So this is just uh, your f of x here. It's just the derivative of your of this function here on the right side. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I think you know about it. So here, if you have, um, this is just uh, the geometrical interpretation of, of uh, the theorem. So here, um, you have uh, a function f, f. So this is the curve re representing f. And if you slice from this point to this point, if you slice the function f, uh, very thinly um, with increments of dx uh, on the x-axis, then um, you can get the, uh, you can get each of the slopes of the tangent line here. And if you 
integrate the slope. If you integrate the slope from, from this point to this point, it's just the total slope, just like um, the slope will be, it's not the sum of each of the slopes here, but you get an average slope of some, or you get a, some straight line that represents this curve. And that is, um, and that uh, represents um, the total integral of the derivatives from, from this point to this point. So here it is. Here. So just notice that uh, here is is just the derivative of of this function. So you have to know. Uh, so if if this is if you're given this one, you have to know. Uh, you have to find a function that this one is a derivative of that function. So that's a. Uh, a, a simple fundamental theorem of calculus, but we'll go to the fundament, fundamental theorem of gradients, for example. This is, uh, of course, gradient is the generalized um, derivative, a three-dimensional derivative. Um, gradients is also, uh, they're also vectors. They have directions. So if you're given a function t, t, which is a function of x, y, and z, then um, you can get the gradient of that by operating the del on t. So again, the total derivative of t is the gradient of t that dl. dl is, of course, in Cartesian coordinates, that's just um, dx, x hat, dy, y hat, dz, z hat. And um, uh, if you get the integral of this, this is, of course, uh, dt. This one is dt. What is the integral of dt, by the way? The integral of any derivative with respect to a function is just, or with respect to a variable, is just. Uh, the variable. So, for example, if you integrate um, dx, for example, that's just x, or integrate uh, dz, for example, that's just z. So, if you integrate, <clears throat> if you integrate dt, or this this one, this is just integral of that. This also gives you dt. I mean, this also gives you the function t. And you evaluate the function from, uh, you evaluate that function at the final point minus the function at the initial point or the value of the function at the initial point, then you'll get uh, this integral where the limits are set by A and B. And you're integrating over a path, P. So you have to specify the path, although, these integrals are path independent, but in integrating, you have to uh, specif specify the path. So let's do an example to illustrate uh, this theorem. So remember, this is the theorem, the fun fundamental theorem for gradients, where this one, or here, is just equal to the the total derivative. So here's a corollary, which I just like to read to you. So this is the integral of the gradient of t from a to b is independent of the path. And if you get the the integral over a closed loop, meaning the final and initial points are equal, then the integral is um, zero. 
because it's path independent. Whatever path you take, for example, a circle or a triangle, for as long as it is closed, then um, the integral of the gradient is always zero. Since the final and initial points are the same. The B and the A are the same. So example, if you let a function uh, let a function t be equal to x y square here, what is the gradient of t? So you just get the partial derivative of t with respect to x uh, in the direction x hat, or par and partial derivative of t with respect to y in the direction y hat plus partial derivative of t with respect to z in the direction z hat. Then you evaluate it from 0, 0, 0, or the origin to 0 0.210. So of course, again, I, I told you that um, you have to choose a path of integration for path integrals, uh, for, for, line, uh, for this uh, line integrals. Sorry, not path integrals. Uh, we just call it line because path integrals is um, is a special name for other form form of integral. So here you have dl equal to this in general in Cartesian coordinates. Of course, in the spherical or cylindrical coordinates, it's it's not the same. Um, and of course, your uh, your gradient of t will just look like this. If you get the derivative of t with respect to x, will just be y squared. This is y squared in the x hat direction, and the derivative of t with respect to y. This is just two x y in the y direction or in the y hat direction. So that's your um, gradient of t. So let's now look at the uh, integral of gradient of t um, with respect to this path, this horizontal path i. So <clears throat> here, uh, at, for, for this path, you can see that the value of y is equal to zero for, for this path. So uh, here, because this is um, this is just a line segment on the x-axis, the dx is equal to um, I mean the, the only dx exists here because the dy is of course uh, a, is constant here. X is not constant here. It changes, the, the X can change the value from zero to two. The Y is constant. It's always zero from, from, for this line, for this segment. So Y is zero. So you, if you get the derivative of DY, that's just zero. So this is zero. Of course, your path is, um, your path is not dependent with z, so you're just doing the the, the integration uh, in the path uh, x in the path that is um, lying on the x y plane. So of course here is uh, zero, so it's that not dependent on z. So your dl will just be dx, and your uh, gradient that dl will just be equal to uh, y square. Only y square because uh, it's only dotted to uh, dx. So y square. So, but y square is what? Y is equal to zero. So everything will just be zero. So uh, the integral, or for this path, it'll just, it's just equal to zero. Because this one is zero, because y is equal to zero here. y is equal to zero, so this is zero. Everything would be zero. 
integral of zero is zero. So for the second path, uh, this is your second path. This is your second path. Um, in this case, the value of y is changing, but the, z, the, the x here is um, equal to two. X equals two, it's constant. So if you get the derivative of two, that's just zero, so dx is zero. In this case, only y is uh, not zero. And of course, it's independent of z, so um, your dl will just be equal to this. Your x is equal to two. two. Uh, the gradient of t, that dl, is just two xy. Because uh, you're just dotting uh, dl with um, this term. So two xy, of course, dx is zero. So if you dot zero with this, it's zero. So it's two xy dy equals four y dy. So if you get the integral of that um, um, zero to one, Uh, what is the limit of uh, dy? The y, I mean y, the limit of y is from zero to, from zero to one. That's the limit of y. So everything will just be uh, equal to two. Because if you integrate four y, that's just, um, four times y squared over two or two y squared from zero to one would be two. So the, the total integral, if you add this from A to B, the total integral will be, so from A to B, the total, the total integral would be zero plus two. So zero plus two is equal to two. But according to the, according to the, According to this uh, theorem, this one, the integral is just equal to the uh, the value of the function at the final point minus the value of the function at the initial point. So you can also do that. So what is value of t at the final point? So you have the final point here, 2, 1, 0, and your original, I mean, initial point zero, zero, zero. What is the value of the final point? What is the value of t at the final point? This is just equal to two times one square. This is two. At the initial point, this is zero times zero square. This is zero. So um, two minus zero is equal to two. So it's, um you have solved the integral and you can also just do or just get the value of the function at the final end. Also, at the initial, then get the difference. Now, to show that the integral is path independent, whatever path you choose, you still get the same integral. So, for example, we use um, this path instead of. <clears throat> the first two segments. We use uh, this path. Uh, here, the, there's a, an equation of a line. Uh, you, can, you can get the equation of, uh, of this line by using the intercepts, the points, uh, the final or the initial point and the final point here. Uh, and the equation of the line will just be giving you y equals one half x. So for whatever value of y, it's just one half of x. So in, in this case, the value of y is one and the value of x is two. So one half of two is equal to one. Uh, here, um, the value of x is, is one and the value of y is one half because the value of y is always one half of the x. And of course here, uh, it's zero, zero, because one half of zero is zero. So that's the equation of the line. And, and here you have um, 
if you get the derivative of y and the derivative of x here it will just give you dy equals one half dx or dx is equal to two dy for example and your of course uh here dx and dy in the dl are not uh zero so these are not zero because uh x changes uh, as as you go from here to here the x changes and all also the y changes so they're not zero and so you will have <clears throat> you have this uh gradient that dl as y squared dx and 2xy dy here because you you will dot this with um this and this one you will have to dot with um this one of course, it uh, the the path is independent of z, so this is zero. So again, if you if you do the integration, uh, you can actually um, because this one is like a var a, a variable. This is a y variable, and this is an x variable. Of course, here you have uh, an x, and a, you're integrating a different variable. So you, you should make a way that um, should make a way to to make this um, make this a single variable. You can use this, uh, or you can use this identity, or you can use this equation. So you can write y square as equal to one fourth x square dx or you can <clears throat> you can also uh, write dx in terms of or you can write this as um two um two dy for example and integrate with respect to y or here you can use um x uh, one half x for y, so you will have x square um, times the dy, which is also equal to one half x. So you will everything will just be three fourth x square dx, dx. Or you can use y. You can use everything for y, or you can you can use y for this, or you can use x for this. It depends on you. You will get the same answer. You can try it. Uh, uh, in your uh, scratch work. So anyway, it will give you um, still the same two, still the same answer. So whatever whatever path you choose uh, in in integrating the gradient, it will give you the same answer. That that's why it's called path independent, and um, in integrating, you really have to specify the path. Although, <clears throat> whatever path you choose, <clears throat> if you have um, an initial point and a final point, whatever path you choose, uh, you get the same answer, but you really have to specify, specify the path. Although path would not be important, but you have to specify it. So we that was the fundamental theorem of the of gradients and now we'll go to the fundamental theorem of divergences. This is the uh, form of the equation. So in chapter two, if we if we're able to find this kind of um, uh, integral, you have a del dot to a vector function uh, integrated over a volume. Then we can always um, make it like this, just a surface integral. This one is a volume integral, the volume integral. This one is a surface integral. So this means that here on this side, you're integrating a volume. On this side, on this side, you're integrating over the area enclosing that volume. 
So you're integrating uh, something over a volume here. Here, it is the same as integrating over uh, the surface covering that volume. So by the way, this is also known as Gauss theorem. Uh, you may have encountered this in your um, previous um, lectures or previous courses in physics. Gauss theorem, Green's theorem, that's also the name of that, and or you can simply call it divergence theorem. <clears throat> so this says that the integral of a derivative um, over a region is equal to the function at the boundary, equal to the value of the function at the boundary. So if you're integrating something over a volume, then of course you can integrate uh, that something, the, 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 the function over the surface that covers the volume. So here, you have um, you have a, a vector function that is uh, divergent at a point or at some points inside the volume. You are uh, uh, there's, for example, uh, a charge is um, exerting some electric field uh, inside the volume. So there's an amount of field inside. So if it continuously um, um, emitting fields, then the fields will be coming out of the surface. The fields will come out from the surface. The total amount that it emits inside is also the total amount that it comes that comes out from the surface. That's the meaning. That's the geometrical interpretation of that. So if you have a charge inside the volume, and it emits electric field. The fields that come out of the whole surface that's covering the volume is also the same as the amount emitted by the charge inside the volume. So this is the meaning of the um, fundamental theorem of divergence. So you can read this geometrical interpretation. So when you, you can download this video and then replay it, then you can read, um, you can pause and then you can read uh, later. So this is what I told you. These are the forces within a volume. So if you have some charges inside the volume, they're emitting fields. And then what flows out of the surface is just the same as um, the, it's just the same as the uh, fields uh, emitted inside the volume, the total. Amount. So for example, uh, we can check uh, this example. <coughs> Um, we're given a vector function here, V, here. So we'll check the divergence of V. So the divergence of V will just be what the, you had to dot uh, partial of, um, partial of Y square over X. Uh, so partial of y square over x will just be zero because um, um, it, this is a function of y and you're, you're getting the partial derivative with respect to x. So for here, you will get the partial derivative with respect to y. So the partial derivative with respect to y will just be 2x for here and this one zero. So you will have 2x x for that and for here you 
you get the partial derivative with respect to z. So you have um, 2i. So you will have 2i. Notice that there's no direction. There's no direction for the divergence. Why? Because uh, the z dot c becomes 1, the y dot y that becomes 1, and the x dot x becomes 1. So this is... Um, this is uh, just 2xy. I mean, 2x plus 2y, or 2 times x plus y. So if you get the, this is now v, you can replace, uh, this is now divergence of v, you can replace the divergence of v uh, with here. This one is, um, <clears throat> that quantity, that expression inside the integral. So you can let the constant two uh, to be placed um, outside the integral. So you will have this um, integral now. So you have, um, you can, distribute this distribute this to here and then of course you can distribute also to here so you will have um the the integral <clears throat> so finally um for x you can um you can do this um for here, you get um, x squared. Or um, you can you can all you can do the distribution, or you can also do this. So um, you have uh, x plus y integrate with dx first, uh, with uh, limits from zero to one. Then uh, you will have uh, dx will just be uh, x squared over 2. And then you will have um, for the y, you will have yx as the integral. And you will integrate from 0 to 1, so that's just equal to y. So this is your first integral. And then that integral here, so you're finished with x. So this is for your x. And the expression becomes this one for the integral of y. So this is equal to 1 half uh, y plus y squared over 2. And then when you integrate it from 0 to 1, it gives you 1. So this, the whole thing here is equal to, is equal to 1. So this is now two times integral of uh, integral from zero to one of one dz. So you have that, and then finally you will get this uh, answer because this is two times one is just equal to two. So that's how you do the um, the integral using this using this how about how about using this how about using that um so you can um enclose uh you, you enclose uh the vector function with a, with a cube so this is a cube this one is a cube Surfaces has a cube. Uh, it has six surfaces. So this first surface, the second surface, the third surface, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth surface. So I will uh, describe the first surface. You have, um, of course, um, this one is closed surface. Closed. This one can be. Um, 
separated into six uh, surface integrals. And then if you add them, that's already a closed uh, surface. So, so here you have V dot DA. What is DA in the first surface? The DA, the DA in the first surface, this surface here, DA would just be equal to dy dz x hat. dy dz x hat. For the second surface, for example, at the back, it's dy dz or negative dy dz x hat. For the third, this is um, dx dz uh, y hat. And for the fourth one, is negative dy dx dz uh, negative, I uh, mean, negative. Uh, Negative dx dz, well y uh, y hat, and then for the fifth for the fifth one you have dx dy z hat, and for the sixth one is uh, dx dy, and that's negative dx dy z hat. So that's uh, for the first surface you have um, y square dy dz, because uh, that that this is. This is from here, y square, and you are in integrating over a surface in this direction. So you have y square dy dz. This is one third. For um, for the second surface, this is negative uh, integral of y square dy dz, negative one third, and for the third surface, dx dz. Um, the third surface is, uh, this is the third surface going to this direction. So this is Y. So you only use this term here. Again, we are dealing with Cartesian coordinates. So it's, it's not the same as in the spherical and in the cylindrical coordinates. So... Uh, you have this. Um, this is now four thirds. How about um, for the fourth surface? Why it's only z squared? It's not two x plus z squared. It's only z squared because for the fourth surface, the fourth one, the the value of y. This is the fourth surface here. This is the fourth surface. The value of y here is equal to zero. So uh, in this case, the value of y is equal to zero. So only z squared uh, is left. Um, uh, for this um, surface, by the way, the value of y is equal to one. For this surface, um, for this uh, surface here, for this, for the for 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 this surface, the value of y is equal to one, and for this surface, the value of y is equal to zero. That's why you're left with. So that's why the two xy here becomes two x because y is one, and then two xy becomes zero here because y is zero. So um, your integral, the total integral, will be negative one third, and for the fifth one. Uh, you're you're left with 2y and then you integrate that that's just one and then for the sixth one everything is zero so zero for the sixth one um the the surface here this surface the value of z is zero so this one is zero so you're integrating zero that gives you zero so here, so that's zero. So if you add everything, if you add all these, that gives you two. It's the same as here. So now, what is the use of, of this um, equation? What is the use of this equation? Sometimes, 
the problems uh, sometimes in in the problems of electrodynamics you will uh, be you're going to find this um, integral but it would be very cumbersome for you to calculate this integral then you can calculate the integral using this it would be easier so uh, there are also times that this is cumbersome to, to do this integral is cumbersome to do then you can use this integral instead of this all you need to know is that uh, is this function is this vector function all you need to do is this vector function v So that's uh, that's the fundamental fundamental theorem of um, divergences. Now we go to the fundamental theorem for curls. This one. The fundamental theorem for curls is the integral um, integral of del cross v dot da is on the surface has an equivalent integral over a path so uh, the geometrical interpretation is this one by the way that's also called stokes theorem so if you have some whirlpool here if you have some curling inside a uh, surface, then uh, this curls inside the surface gives you a general uh, uh, curls on the side of the surface. So on this side, you will feel some curl. This side, uh, on this part, you also feel some curls. On this part, you can also feel some curls. On this part, you can feel some curls. And so, in general, if you have many curls here inside, many curls, then in general, you'll feel the curls, the curls on the side of the surface. The side of the surface is um, bounded by a line or by a path, a closed path. So in order for you to know the, the direction of the surface, uh, the, you should always use your right hand. So if the curl is like um, counterclockwise, the, the direction on, or, or, or the direction of the patch of area would be going to you. But if it's like clockwise, the direction of the patch uh, the the patch, the area of uh, of the patch, the area vector of the patch, is uh, going to uh, the uh, going away from you. If it's counterclockwise, it's going to you. So just use your right hand to get the direction, because you you need direction here. You need direction of your area. And then this one, of course, um, uh, the direction is, again, um, if the path is like going clockwise or uh, going clockwise or counterclockwise, it's just give you, it just will give you positive or negative. So here, so if you have a, in this direction, using your right hand, that gives you da on that on that um, direction going up. This uh, corollary, the integral, the integral of the curl of v with respect to an area depends only on the boundary line and not on the particular surfaces whatever surface you use uh it's um it gives you the same answer for this integral 
just like in the in the uh, fundamental fundamental theorem of gradients whatever path you choose the difference of the uh, of, of the value of the function at the final point minus the initial min, well, minus the value of the function at the initial point is the same no matter path you use here uh, for the fundamental theorem of curls whatever surface you use gives you the same answer so if if you're getting the 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 integral of the curl over a closed surface uh, closed surface it gives you zero so it's it is um it is better um explained using an example so for this example uh we, we will use a vector function of this form of course uh, you can uh in in the problems there are a lot of uh, forms of v of vector function but um for this example we're using a very simple vector function v equals to xz plus t y square in the y direction and then you have uh, plus 4yz squared z hat or in the z direction there is no x component here yeah in this case for the vector function so for the stokes theorem again um um we can solve it uh using this integral or we can solve it using this integral so in this case uh the surface is a square or is a yeah four di four sided figure and then so in this direction uh in this uh figure the directions are determined by um by the segments which is, is counterclockwise so the direction using your right hand would be just going to you so the curl of v in this case the curl of v is a vector quantity okay you know the formula in the previous lecture so the curl of v will just be this one and then of course uh the da would be dy dz this is on the plane of uh yz plane so dy dz uh so the the vector area would be directed towards you so the vector area is directed in the x positive x axis so you can replace uh curl of v with this one here so what happens x uh in this plane the x is equal to zero so x here would be zero and the x would be zero and of course um uh since you are dotting uh x so you only have to use um this term because that is x and x uh here um your there's no z direction for your da so it's zero it becomes zero here so this is now 4z squared dy dz and then you integrate that with respect to y first from zero to one and then z that's four thirds so um this is the this is the integral uh, using the first using this one and then now we'll use this one there are four segments to the surface uh, bounding the sur bound bounding the surface here so you can separate the four segments then of course the first segment would be um the first segment would be x equal to zero z um z only the y changes from zero to one 
only the y from 0 to 1. So the integral of v dot dl, uh, v dot dl would just be, uh, this is your v, and your dl is just dy y hat. So you only use this term. You only use this term. This one, if you dot to the <clears throat> dl would be 0 because dz is 0. So you will only get uh, this um, value. For the second segment, uh, you, you observe that x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, and uh, v dot dl it will be just be 4z squared dz. And so you will get um, this integral. For the third segment, again, uh, x is equal to 0 because it's just in the yz plane. Uh, your VDL is just uh, 3y squared dy. So you'll be able to get this integral, which is negative 1. And for the fourth segment, um, x equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and um, VDL is, of course, uh, equal to 0. So everything will be zero in the fourth segment. <clears throat> you can, you can, um, we can see that from here. The fourth segment only z changes. So x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. So everything will be zero. So if you add everything for the closed uh, path, that gives you three fourths. Still the same as this. As you expect, uh, it's, it's the same. So um, you can redo this example, all this example, and then if you redo it and you don't understand understand some of the steps, uh, you can ask me in our forum at Mole and at um, at Mole and also at the Google Classroom that we have. Now, um, integration by parts, you know, all, all of these uh, ordinary integration by parts are calculus course. So if you have a derivative of um, <clears throat> product of two functions, then this is just equal to the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So now if you... Uh, put some integral. Um, if you put some integral here, um, integral here, integral here, and uh, you, what is that? The integral of this, um, of this, uh, this term. The integral of this term will just be f g from A to B, FG from A to B. So that's equal to the integral of, of this part and of this part. So if you put this one, if you put this term, if you put this term um, outside or on the other side, so that will give you this. This expression. This is now the integration by parts expression. So look, uh, this becomes negative on the other side. So the integral of f times dg <coughs> dg dx times dx is just equal to the integral of g uh, df dx dx plus fg. So for example, for example, this function, you want to integrate this. Uh, this one you can write as, this one you can write as derivative of negative e to the negative x with respect to x. Yeah, because uh, the 
derivative of the exponential is just the exponential. In this case, the exponent of the exponential is negative, so you have a negative sign here. So um, you can get the integral using um, integration by parts of, of this uh, or of this um, of this um, function. So you let f of x equals x, in this case, f of x equals x, g of x um, equals e to the negative x. So df over dx is equal to 1. The derivative of x, which is just x, so in this case, dx over dx is equal to 1. So using integration by parts, this is now equal to... Um, G, which is equal to negative G, which is equal to negative e to the negative x um, times df over dx is, is equal to one, and your um, dx uh, will just be here. Um, your integral, uh, your f times g will just be x times e to the negative x from 0 to 1, um, uh, from 0 to infinity. I mean. So from 0 to infinity, this will just give you what? This will give you um, infinity. This will just give you 0. And then at 0, it also gives you 0. So everything would be 0 for, the, for this, um, for this um, term. So you're e to the negative x, the integral of this would just be equal to e to the negative x, um, e to a uh, negative e to the negative x, you evaluate from 0 to 1. This is just equal to um, 1. Uh, yeah, that's it, it's just equal to 1. <clears throat> Any, uh, if you have uh, some questions, you can uh, just um, put that in our only classroom. So anyway, um, that's it. Um, if you do uh, integration by parts for um, del operators, uh, you have these um, identities. So you can, for this one, you can put the integral uh, on each of the terms here. Then you can integrate with respect to the volume this one here um so uh by the way this one uh, by the theorem of divergence you can uh, rewrite that as this one so that um uh you can get the integral you can get the integral of this term which is this one to be equal to, um, if you transfer this to the other side, it would become ne negative so that this will be your integration by parts for, um, for, for the del, for this one. But uh, we will be able to, to know uh, this more in the uh, next chapter. We will use uh, this kind of integration by parts in, in the next chapter, in chapter two. So, so for next meeting, we will 
do curvilinear coordinates. So I hope that you at least a little bit you have understood something today. So just practice doing the examples that were presented uh, again and again in your notes until you know everything about it. But um, more examples, we will not discuss more examples here on this chapter, but uh, we will do the, the examples or more examples in the uh, next chapter, in chapter two, which is the electrostatics. So uh, in chapter two also we'll be, we will be um, doing um, the integrals in, in different coordinate system, like most uh, cases we do in spherical coordinates. So we will, we will go to curvilinear coordinates uh, in the next lecture. Uh, we will discuss the spherical polar coordinates and then we also discuss the uh, cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates. So see you next meeting. Thank you for your attendance. Um, please uh, uh, interact with me in our um, Google Classroom. See you next meeting.